Now, Galileo, it will launch its final four satellites later today. Now, the blastoff will be at 25 past 1 CET when an Ariane 5 rocket carrying the satellites will depart from French Guiana. Well, the new additions will bring the total number in orbit to 26, meaning that by the end of the year, the EU's version of GPS will be in full operation. I'm joined by your news' space correspondent, Jeremy Wiltz, in the studio. Jeremy, looking at this, uh, you know, launch today, what, what, what does it mean for you? You and me you know i'd say today you and i space fans we're gonna have a great launch to watch right there's 25 past one and ariane 5 going up is always great but there are four satellites on board it takes the constellation up to 26. we get to a situation where we've got uh you need a minimum of 24 to be fully operational um uh, the interesting thing about this is that we are already receiving galileo signals they're totally integrated with gps signals so when you think you're using gps you might already be using galileo by the end of this year galileo is going to kind of should kind of replace um, uh, GPS in terms of the signals that we're using now in Europe and the accuracy you can get from Galileo is much higher so you can get down to an accuracy of around about uh, one meter for the civilian service whereas with GPS you're around about uh, five meters if you have a modern mobile phone if you have a, a recent car then they are already equipped to use these Galileo signals so if you're um, moving around inside a city particularly the accuracy you're going to have in navigation is much higher but of of course, there are all kinds of other services, emergency services, agricultural services, lots of kinds of positioning services rely on this. And uh, Europe's moving forward with, with the project, has been steadily building up the constellation. And today, we get up to the magic number of 24 that you need in order to be complete. So I suppose we don't even know it, that we're actually already using yes. uh, this system and it will be integrated into our systems. But for the project itself, it, it hasn't been really smooth sailing, has it? It's not been no. plain sailing at all. Um, Galileo, when you look back into the past, it was supposed to be a public-private partnership and uh, in the end the, uh, the the private companies decided they didn't really want to put up the money and not be able to charge for services because GPS was given away for free you then had problems with the clocks on some of these satellites uh, which weren't working properly and of course you need excellent clocks in order to have very very good um, navigation we also had two satellites which weren't put into the right kind of orbit because there was a problem with the with the rocket but speaking to ESA this week apparently that's been fixed they've got a software patch and those two kind of suboptimal satellites will actually be integrated into the system and then of course there's Brexit looking forward a lot of these satellites were built in the UK will UK companies be able to build the satellites that they're going to be building to replace the older Galileo ones and then there's also the question of whether the UK outside the EU will be able to use the military grade extremely high accuracy version of Galileo. And Jeremy I'd like to bring in the stories that we've been covering today which is mostly related to weather. You said there are many other uses uh, for for GPS uh, tracking systems. What about in terms of maybe weather that's important to us today? Well absolutely of course I mean all of these things are kind of integrated the Galileo systems are used also in for the Copernicus satellites which are one, some of the ones that we're using now to to monitor our climate um, to understand pollution, looking at the wildfires, um, what's happening in Greece as well. All of those are using Galileo positioning because if you don't, if you don't know where you are, then you can't really work out these, these positions, get the right pictures. And so Galileo fits into that whole suite. Um, as I say, it's a European project, just like Copernicus. It's an effort by a uh, civilian organization, European uh, Euro Union, to do this. And uh, they, they all fit in together, attempting to understand what's going on on our planet on a daily basis, but also with things like climate. And I think if you can log on to the website, we can just see all some of those images, right? Yeah. Well, thank you for that. Uh, Jeremy Wilkes, our space correspondent there. Thanks.